Hello again and welcome to the last part, it's the part 5, of this tutorial if you don't want to stay a beginner in AutoCAD. We are going to discuss here multi-leaders and the properties panel. Are you ready? Let's start! Multi-leaders Multi-leaders are an interesting way to add annotations to our drawings. They consist in an arrow that connects to a text or a block with an attribute. Let's have a look to it a bit more in detail. We can add a multi-leader from the Annotation panel at the Home tab, or if we switch to the Annotation tab, there is a full panel dedicated exclusively to leaders. The first thing I should do is check out the settings by clicking in this arrow here. So it opens a window very identical to the Dimension Style Manager. Let's select the style, the standard one, and modify it. Here I'm going to start with the text height, and because it's too small, I'm going to change it to 250. As my text labels are 350, this will be just a bit smaller. Then on leader format, I want also to change the style of the arrowhead, for example 200. On leader structure, I have by default two leader points. Then uncheck the box for landing distance, if I don't want it to be a fixed value. I click on OK to confirm the changes and close the window. So now I can add a leader. It's easy, just click on the multi-leader icon, choose a base point, then specify the leader landing location and click one time more to type the text. For example, external wall, as it's what the leader indicates. Then change here the layer style to annotative. Nice, this time I'm going to repeat the process, but instead I'm going to add an annotative multi-leader to appear in this viewport in the scale 1 per 100. Change here the layer style to annotative and then on the multi-leader style manager click on modify. So I will not change the settings because I think they are quite acceptable. I close the window. Don't forget to make sure the scale is correct, 1 per 100. And draw the multi-leader. For example, window. Now if I double click on the arrow, I can see the quick properties of the multi-leader. For example, let's change the landing distance to 10, and you can see the distance updating automatically. So if I switch to the layout tab, I can see how the annotative multi-line looks like. Multi-leaders have two types of content, multi-line text or a block with an attribute which it's this example here. Now I'm going to show you how to make this. Go again to the multi-leader style manager and here I'm going to create a new style. I select this time annotative and click on new. So my new style will have the same settings as the annotative style. Choose a name for it. And when I'm ready, I click on continue. On this window, we go to content and change the multi-leader style to block. In this list, as you can see, there are already several blocks for multi-leader that come with AutoCAD. Apart from this, I can also use a block made by me, but this time let's use this circle. Then I can change the scale, but I'm going to keep it 1. Have in mind that in this kind of multi-leaders, using a block, we don't specify the height of the text. Then I create a multi-leader somewhere here. And as the text inside the block is an attribute, I'm asked to insert a value. Let's put one for it. And click on OK to confirm this choice. OK, I don't like to match this position, so let's use the grips to put it a bit here inside. Now it's good. And you can see that it has an acceptable size on the layout. 
Let's add another multi-leader. And this time I put 5 for the value. You can see how simple it is. One disadvantage in multi-leaders, unlike dimension lines, if I change the multi-leader style settings, the existing objects do not update automatically. So if I decide I want to change the block, I have to draw them again. As you see, I inserted the arrow with the new block. On the next example, I'm going to add a multi-leader using a standard style. Non-annotative. So, if I use the scale 1, it will be too small for the drawings that I have here. I need to increase it. Let's try with 20. Then I close this window. I'm going to draw the leader. Ah, and you can see that the block I have here is a bit different. This one has two attributes. I just put random values. And now the size fits quite well for this drawing. Have in mind that using the blocks by default in multi-leaders can be hard to measure exactly. Actually, what happens is the measurements themselves are defined at the block editor. When I specify the multi-leader settings, I can just set the scale. Each multi-leader can have more than one arrow. If I click on Add Leader, then I select the multi-leader, I can add an extra leader. So this is as simple as it looks and it's possible to add how many leaders as I want. I could place another from this point or press escape to cancel the command. To remove a leader, just click on the icon located below, select first the object and then click to remove the arrow. Now let's talk a bit more in detail about the properties of objects. You can find an entire panel here. As you can see, there are three main tabs. The first is for the color, the second the line weight and the third the line type. By default, these settings follow the properties of the layer where the object is. Now, suppose I want to change the color of only a certain object. I click on it, go to the color tab and change it to red, for example. So, at this moment, the color of the object is not regulated by the layer color. Next situation. Now I have a block. And you will see that they can act a bit different. If I try to change the color, you can see that it doesn't work. And as you remember, we should put the lines that form a block in the layer 0 before creating it. So, I'm going to copy this block. And then I use the command explode to return to its original objects. If we want to give more freedom to the block before creating it, we set the color of the objects as by block. Then I convert the door to a block. I finish. And as you can see, it's possible to change the color to follow the layer or choose a specific one, like I did before. There are also several ways that I can play with colors in blocks. For example, I can set the color of these two objects to an orange. Then I create a block. And what happens is that when I change the layer, those two objects will always keep the same color. Line weights. I'm going to select this line and change the line weight here to 1 mm. But nothing seems to change. Why? The line weight at the status bar is switched off. So I need to switch it on to see it. If you don't find this icon there, go to the corner, click in these three lines and find it on the list there. Also, look that the weights measure exactly how they are printed. One millimeter. And no matter the scale that we are using. So basically the line weights are annotative. 
Now I'm going to switch off the icon Show Line Weights. And now even the line looks similar as the others. Also it's not displayed on the layout. It's still there when you print a project or publish a PDF. Here you have it. And now you can ask, why does not AutoCAD show the line weights by default? Honestly, I'm not sure about the answer, but I think it's to not have the workspace too messy with different weights of objects, especially if there are lots of them. Basically, it's up to us to decide if we want the line weights or not. Like line weight, there is a similar option to add a thickness. In this case for polylines. I can use the command pedit, it means polyline edit. I select the polyline, I select the polyline, and you can see several options to use here. For example, I can turn into a spline, or click on the curve to come back to the original polyline, along with other options that you can explore later. If I click on the third option, I can add a width. Then it prompts. Specify a new width for all segments. This time, this width value is a real size, like when you draw standard dimensions or standard text. So let's type 50 and the polyline has this new shape. I can still snap to the object snap points and they are now in the middle because when we add a width to a polyline, it basically expands to the sides. Extra tip. If I wanted, I could draw a wall just using one polyline with a specific width. For example, let's draw this rectangle with 5 meters per 2 meters. Then I right click, and this is a different way to access the settings that you can find on pedit. I select width and put the thickness of 150. So this could be a wall. However, look what happened here in the corner. It looks like that these joints are not connected. And this is because the polyline is not closed. I open again the right click menu and this time on polyline I click on close to have the result that I want. Now let's talk about the remaining setting, the line type. I'm going to select this line. Then I click in this tab to select the line type. In this case, there was already a dashed line selected, but let's see the others. Then click on load, and you can find a bunch of line types in this list here. Let's choose this one, click on OK, select it again here. Then it didn't change, I also have to select the line. And now yes, it, it, cha it changes to the one that I want. Now let's go to the properties, there is a parameter very important here, is the line type scale. And we have to play with the numbers to know which range of values we need to put here. Another thing, you can also notice that the current value is zero. Of course, it's not possible to have a scale zero. But the reason of this is, on the unit properties, I have the precision set to no decimals. I'm going to change it to two decimals and you can see that actually the current scale is 0.1. Now let's see how the line type scale works. The smaller it gets, the more difficult it is to see to distinguish the shape. The larger it is, it's more likely to see just a continuous line or zooming into a gap. Let's see another very important tip. It's common that we want the line types to appear in a specific viewport. So, as the viewports are in a specific scale, this one is set as 1 per 100, we should set up the scale in the model space before choosing the line type. If we do this, the line type will look exactly as it is in the viewport. On the other hand, if my scale is set to 1 per 1 and choose the same line type, this is the current appearance at the model space, when I switch to a viewport that it scaled differently, 1 per 100 in this case, I can see that the appearance will not be the same. 
So, this is the end of the last part of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video and now I just encourage you to keep practicing in AutoCAD and for sure, the more you practice, the more knowledge you get. As well, don't forget to subscribe to Cat in Black to access all the tutorials in this channel. Thank you very much and I hope to see you next time.